What's going on with you guys? Just tapping in with the family real quick. See what's on your mind. Doing the late night tap in. How y'all been, guys? Y'all good? You guys had a good um holiday weekend so far? What's up, Wartox? I see you play. I still got to get with you, brother Wartox, about getting the Hidden History Museum site together. I'm just tapping in, man. We're doing a late night, Saturday night shop up, seeing what's going on with you guys. Just want to see what's on your mind. What's up, Nikki? How you doing, beloved? What's up, Juicy Genius in the house? Um, just, I've been busy, even though I'm you know, still trying to get 100% with the little um, sickness virus that's going around. I'm, um, I'm about 90%, still got that little nagging 10% bothering me. But yeah, I'm good. And I hope you guys are good. What's up, D-Tub, and I see you. Waiting on everybody to pile on in the room. Um, I've been seeing little clips of um, Soul Train, the Soul Train Awards tonight. It was, from what I've seen, the clips were actually pretty good. Surprisingly, the program seemed pretty thorough. They had a lot of good acts on there. So Escape, they were good. Um, what, Morris Day in the time, they had a lot of good people. Shantae Moore killed it. So I like that they mixed a lot of um, um, the old with the new, some of the more seasoned vets with some of the new booties. So, yeah, that was a good thing. Whoever put it together, they they really had their thinking caps on over there. They they put together a nice program. I didn't even know it was coming on. You know, I don't know how they even advertise these things anymore. But but from what I've seen, the performances were were pretty good. Uh, what was that whole thing with Escape? There was some kind of shading going on there. I don't know. I know the gossip sites are going to be having a field day with it tomorrow. <clears throat> so that's going to be interesting. What's up, D? I see you. So what's the I mean, I'm gonna start bringing folks in in a minute. Let me let me say this: We have any LA people in here? Where are my LA people? All my people from LA. You know what we need? I need um any brothers or sisters out here? Any brothers and sisters? If you are are if you are an interior decorator for commercial properties, we we want to get some um we want to get an interior decorator for the museum, and we need some seasoned people who's out here in L.A., if you're in Memphis, that's not going to do us any good. If you're in some other state, that's not going to do us any good. Much respect to you. Um, We want somebody out here in Los Angeles. We are actively looking for an interior decorator for certain things that we're trying to do with the museum out here. We need to holler at you ASAP. We want somebody in L.A. If you are in L.A., you're an interior decorator who's thorough, and experienced or if you know somebody who's thorough and experienced you know my email my email is info at Tariq all right and we talking about experienced don't call me with your auntie who's a deaconess at a church and she organized the church pews she's not really in an interior decorator that's not what we're looking for no disrespect to your auntie we were looking for some people who know how to really freak some shit. You know what I'm saying? To really put some stuff together. So info at TariqElite.com. That is my email. So hit me up and let me know who you got in your family who can get down with this. So let's, let me get some folks on here. Let me know what's on your mind. Let me get some folks up on here. Raise your hand if you want to get on. Who wants to get on and chop it up? Let me see what's on everybody's mind. What's up, Mikhail? I see you down there, brother. Oh, yeah, Mikhail, I know you know some people, brother. Throw me some some folks. My brother Mikhail knows everybody in L.A. So, yeah, I know you know somebody, brother. Yeah, throw me some names. I know you're about to text me, too. Uh, let me get some folks in here. Uh, y'all raise your hand if you want to get on. Let me talk to the family. Let's get um, Warfare's little brother, Chairman Kang. All right, Chairman Kang. What's up, man? Hey, what's going on, brother Tariq? Uh, I just want to talk to you today. Also, happy Thanksgiving. You know, hopefully that sickness clears up, yo. Yeah. But, uh, you know, brother Adonis? 
Adonis. Um, I don't think I know him personally. Yeah, so I just want to let you know, bro, some Thanksgiving plate from his mama just came in. All I'm saying is, I don't know if those was jumbo carrots or yams, you feel me? So, I don't know, it's not very looking too good for him. You know, we're trying to check his blackness in the other space, but, you know, I appreciate your time. Like now, I why said, you, now, why are you dumping clear. on our brother? Now, why are you dumping on Adonis? Adonis is cool. Why are you dumping on Adonis? Hey, man, it's not me. I'm a listener. But I'm just saying, you know, you know, you FBA. So I'm just trying to see, man. So. So you're not, you're not FBA, right? Uh, nah. Now, where you from? Where's your family from? I'm from Texas. Where's your family from? This is Tether Babble. Where's your family from? Oh, Houston. Okay, that that means Ghana somewhere. Okay, all right. I see your flag. Yeah, you got a Jamaican flag. Okay, why why don't Tethers? Why why are you guys so ashamed of your homeland? Why do y'all do that? Why are you so ashamed of your homeland? Well, I'm not Ethiopian or Jamaican. I just had those in there. I oh. can't speak a bit. A oh, okay, okay. So, look, Tethers. Don't hop in our spaces with your shame. You guys have all of this passive aggressive energy because of the shame of you and your family having to flee. Y'all don't project that stuff on us. Y'all come with all that that corny tether babbling. You can tell his I knew he was a tether because his jokes were very corny and unfunny. That's one thing about tethers. They zero sense of humor. I can respect good jokes, but this uh, nigga, that shit is corny. Where the hell are you from, nigga? That's why these tethers get mad because they don't know how to roast. Their jokes are corny and they run up on an FBA and we start verbally light that ass up. So they hold that shit. They harbor that. You called me a butcher scratcher when I was three years old, nigga. It's that type of thing. Because you never learn how to roast. You're not witty. You're corny and you're passive aggressive and you're jealous. A foundation of black Americans. Get that out of your system. Nigga, you fled. Pop your collar to the people you fled to. Just do that. Stop bullshitting. And then when you start trying to check the paperwork, motherfuckers want to play dumb. I, I'm from Cleveland. No, nigga. Where are you from? From? Uh, I, I am from Dallas. No, nigga. You're not from Dallas. Where are you from? I was born here. No, nigga. Where's your ancestry from? You, you, you dig? That type of thing. Because we're checking people's paperwork now. None of that $5 FBA stuff. People trying to fake the funk now. A lot of folks trying to fake the funk. All right. Let me get um the Dirt Boys. All right. Let's get the Dirt Boys in here. Yeah, I hear my dogs back here snoring, snoring. The Dirt Boys. What's up, Dirt Boys? Not much with you. Peace to the Romans. Appreciate the time and space coming up here. Man, I kind of the same thing. Uh, we could chop it up about that. So I had a couple spaces. Uh, what are the benefits to the dis- diaspora to uh, the black Americans? You know what I mean? We couldn't really come up with no real answers. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's the thing. And No disrespect. <laughs> to the brothers and sisters in the diaspora, man. But we just kind of came to the realization, like, hey, man, this whole Pan-Africanism thing that we've been promoting, unfortunately, it's been extremely one-sided for a long time. Um, You can find one or two sympathizers here and there, but as far as really groups of people rolling out the red carpet for us in the diaspora, we, we just came to the real uh, realization it's not really happening. And you know what? We also came to the realization that's okay. You did? That's fine. Because we have 40-something million of us, probably around 50 million. There's 50 million, and I, I'm, I'm throwing a, a, a kind of a conservative number out there. I believe there's around 50 million of us. There's 50 million foundational black Americans who's thorough. And that's all we need. 
And we're realizing that. We're realizing that, wait a minute, we don't need all of these one-sided coalitions that really don't work. No disrespect to anybody, but we ain't doing the one-sided coalition no more. And we talked about that at the rally. Did you guys see the footage of the rally? I posted the footage last night. People love it. The footage is beautiful. And I really, this is really my first time listening to many of the speeches all the way through because I I didn't actually hear all of them. I know who the speakers were, but I didn't really get to hear everybody's speeches because during the live event, I'm running running around doing stuff backstage. But man, everybody represented, man. And it's, it's so beautiful. You guys go to my YouTube channel, Tariq Radio, to see the whole HD two hours and 30 minutes film. We did it like a documentary film to a certain degree. We mixed in some interviews with the crowds. Beautifully shot. My camera crew was fly. Beautifully, beautifully shot. And um, the speakers were dynamic. Everybody. My, my good sister Jade was a phenomenal host. Dr. Randy Short was representing. My brother Dwan B came and represented. Brother Raheem Shabazz represented. Connie Collins really got down. That sister was spitting hot fire. Uh, Brother James Small was spitting. Brother Kaba was breaking down some history. Boyce Watkins got up there and represented. Oh, man. Um, Sister Mayotte from out there in the DMV, she represented heavy. Um, Greg Marcel Dixon brought the house down. My sister Teslin got busy with it. I was phenomenal. Did y'all see how fly I was? I'm a, I'm a, I, I don't like to brag. I like to be humble. But nigga, did, la, la, let me try to talk to the ladies for a minute. Hold on. Ladies, did y'all see how fly I was? Ladies, pop your collar. Pop your goddamn collars, ladies. Did y'all see how fly I was and how I was moving and spitting with my fly ass suit? Ladies, did you see it? Did you see it, woman? You know you saw that. I have to say it myself. I was fly as a motherfucker. (laughs) I had to pop my collar. If I'm fly to myself, I know I was fly to you too. I looked and sounded great. I was in a zone, baby. And everybody was in a zone. It's a phenomenal video, man. Phenomenal video. Y'all better go watch that, man. I put it up there. Great stuff. People are like, man, when is the next one? That's how excited people are like, damn, I wish I would have went. Y'all should have went, man. Y'all, that was history. That was history. That was a historic event, man. Phenomenal. And we got it organized within a couple of weeks, man, to be honest. We got that thing popping within a few weeks organizing it. We didn't even get the location until um shit we didn't even know the location we were going to get until like two or three weeks before yeah but it was phenomenal but the next event the the next big nationwide event is going to be well there's a i have a lot of events coming up there's a lot of them um february We're going to have the theatrical release of the new movie, American Maroon, and then we're going to have it on our streaming site. So we're trying to get all that together. We're going to have an event out here in L.A., all my my West Coast people. And some people might be able to fly in. Um, I might make it available for people to fly in. We're going to have a big VIP event at the museum. We're going to have a soft grand opening there. And that's going to be in February. Um, that's going to be a big event, especially out here in L.A. That's why I want to talk to some of my interior decorators out here. I need y'all to holler at me. If you are an interior decorator in L.A., holler at me. And my dog is sitting here farting on me because I've been giving my dog Thanksgiving leftovers, and they farting, and it smells like shitty yams and all types of stuff. Good Lord. But I digress. I'm trying to breathe with these dog farts in the house. But um, the next big event nationwide is going to be Dallas, the Dallas event. We're going to have the Business Expo down in Dallas, and that's going to be phenomenal. The FBA Expo in Dallas, possibly Memorial Day weekend. 
and we're going to keep everybody posted on that. Let's get um, Brother FBA Warrior in here. FBA Warrior, hop on, brother. Then we're going to get Wade in here. FBA Warrior, hop on, man. I'm good. Man, thank you so much, brother. Happy holidays to you. What's on your mind? Yes, sir. Coming live from uh, D.C., uh, Northwest to be exact. I wanted, I do want to say respect to Miss Carly Collins and brother uh, Olu for holding it down um, that Saturday because they were working their butts off. And um, I want yes, to show gratitude to them. Um, I do want to speak about briefly um, the whole Jerry Jones situation. I, I can't stand these buck dancing coons taking up for him. So I'm glad that we are on code and, and pointing out the um, – the uh the the um the contradictions and Kanye I don't know what the hell is on wrong with him I mean he's all over the place he's hanging with these type of people but on live he's saying yeah. um, he he he's he's saying he's saying some things that I can agree with but the people he's hanging with I, I don't I, I don't understand it at all so um I'm glad that we're all on code and we're pushing forward and um I just want to say that FBA warrior I'm out ma'am much respect to you brother much respect. Let's get Wade in here. Brother Wade, hop on. Hey, what's going on, Terry? Yeah, I just want to say I respect the movement. You know, um, my family's actually from Jamaica, but we've always, um, ever since I was young, my mom always told me about, you know, the foundation of Black Americans that paved the way for us to be here. So just so you know, not all of us are tellers, man. You got a lot of us in the movie. Like, of course. Yeah, of course. All, the, all of the foreign brothers and sisters are not tethers at all. Absolutely. Yeah, okay, you're right over there, brother. You, okay, let me. Okay, okay, uh, brother was over there making some oxtails or something. I didn't. There was a lot of noise going on over there, brother. I don't know what was happening. Um, let me get some more folks in here. Let's get um Joe Butler in here. Let's get Joe Butler. Joe Butler, what's up, brother? Hello. Hey, Tari hey Tariq, what's up, Joe? Tariq, what's going on, bro? What's up, Joe? Man, How you doing, bro? Man, What's in here, bro? Long time listener, man. Uh, you are, thank you for what you've been doing, man. For real. Uh, from Nashville, Tennessee, Much myself. Sure. There you go. I know we got a delay in here, man. Hold on. Just, this, this is the first time on Twitter space. Give me one second. Hold on. Oh. Look, I got the Metro I got the Metro PCS Wi-Fi, man. My fault. Hold on. There you go. And I know you probably got a Bluetooth on. Come on, brother. What's going on? <laughs> but no, hey, uh, I want to say uh, thank you for shedding light on Mason, Tennessee, uh, with the whole trying to they trying to dissolve that Trump hour. Well, they were trying to yeah. yeah they, thank you for that, man. Because we the local news out here didn't say no word about that at all. I didn't know nothing about yeah. that until you said something about that. So appreciate that, bro, for real. No doubt, no doubt, man. I'll let, all right, Joe, I appreciate. I'll land my plane call, brother. All right, Joe's going through some things over there. Joe's up there making some barbecue. In the middle of the night, and he, like he hear delay. There's no delay. All right, let's get Jody Joe. Let's get Jody Joe in here. What's up, Jody Joe? Jody Joe, what's up, brother? Where you at, Joe? Or is Jody Joe a girl? I don't know. Jody Joe? Yeah, what's going on, man? How you feeling? What's up? There you go. What's on your mind, Jody? Oh, my bad. My bad. Is, 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 Y'all can hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, brother. What's up? Okay, okay. No, no. Uh, no, uh, I'm just checking in. I just tuned in to it a little later, though. Uh, but no. All right, Jody. Okay, okay. Jody's confused. All right. Thank you, Jody. All right. If you guys are confused, you don't need to hop on. It's okay. Jody was confused. Some of y'all are just coming. It's Saturday night. Some of y'all are just coming home from the strip club. Many of you are confused. Your lap dance drunk. You have been grinded on by hood rats trying to get their rent paid, and that confuses a lot of niggas. You drunk and <laughs> sexually confused for the night. You don't know what's going on. You've been teased all night by a musty stripper somewhere at a hole-in-the-wall strip joint in Tennessee somewhere. All right? You don't know what to do. I mean, and they're drinking them janky drinks in a smoke filled club, smelling like weed, and you got stripper must on you. It's 
So that's a deadly combination. That confuses a lot of niggas. Bad liquor, weed, and stripper must. That's a combination that just fucks the mind up. Niggas don't know where they are. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know where you're going. But you're going to work it out. You're going to work it out. Everything is going to be all right. Just take a good bath with some Epsom salt. You got to get that stripper must. You're going to have to use Epsom salt to get that out. That strip of us is a different kind of must. My fellas know what I'm talking about. Peace. What's up, hey, Juicy? Hey, peace, Tariq. Uh, peace of power to the family in this How are you doing? How are you doing, King? Um, congratulations on, um, on everything. It's been a phenomenal year for FBA. Thank you for all the efforts yes, and uh, all of spending your time and your resources um, for putting all these extremely important projects from the museum to our historical rally and to our FBA Expo coming in. Phenomenal. Also, I wanted to say I can't wait to see you on 85 South. I believe that's going to be super lit because they yes, definitely yes. need some FBA energy on that stage. So I'm so excited uh, for you to come here um to atlanta for that last thing i wanted to say was that um i did tag you in this post from cnn where cnn was acknowledging black twitter saying that we were mourning you know what elon musk has been doing i said well it's interesting that cnn has noticed what black twitter is doing as it pertains to our discussion about the new elon musk twitter but y'all ignored everything as it pertains to rally for reparations so just right. wanted to say that exactly real talk Thank you so much, beloved. Now, yeah, like I said, I'm going to be in Atlanta next week, actually. I'm doing the 85 South show. So I'll be back down in Atlanta. My Atlanta folks, holler at me. My Atlanta folks, holler at me. I will be down there. What, what's the weather like? Is the weather good in Atlanta right now? Because I'd be forgetting that I go to these cities because I'm bundling up. Like Because I should have had more warmer clothes for Dallas. I'd be forgetting I go to these cities and I see the weather forecast and it'll it'll say 60. I'm like, oh, I can I can rock that. 60. Okay, I bring this little jacket right here. That 60 ain't nothing but a thing. Then I go there and it's like 49 damn degrees. I'm like, shit. I'm like, hell, let me get one of these illegal immigrants crossing the border over here to give me one of their jackets. Shit. <laughs> it's freezing in this bitch. It was cold as hell in Texas. I'm down there freezing my ass off, dude. And niggas outside watching the Dallas Cowboy games. They had like a big screen TV outside downtown. People out there watching the Dallas Cowboys. I'm like, if y'all don't take your asses inside and barbecue something and invite me over so I can be warm and eat with you, shit. Cold as hell out here. So I hope it's not that cold in Atlanta. Hope everything's going to be cool in Atlanta. Um, raise your hand if you want to get on. Let's get um, let's get Draco. Let's get Draco in here. We're going to get Draco in here. What? I'm good, man. What's going on with you, Draco? Not much, man. I hope you get over that sickness quickly, man. I wish you a speedy recovery. Yes, sir, man. Yeah. Much respect. So, what's yeah. on your mind, Dre? So, um, I had a quick suggestion because I looked at the uh, the goofy uh, white chick that was interviewing the uh, Hebrew tetherites. That's the term I came up for yeah. uh, for them, the Hebrew tetherites. Y'all pass that around. Yeah. And the uh, the the goofy op nigga. Um, and it just dawned on me like, if you ever do another event like that, or when you do another one. Have a couple of your people on the outskirts to deal with those uh, propagandists that want to come and film, uh, you know, a slanted uh, perspective on what we're doing. So that was just a suggestion I had, and I'll land my plane there. There you go. Well, here's the thing, and, and you know, I get where you're coming from. But, um, and we, we had folks looking out, and folks were just looking out on their own. Shout out to the family. The family was just kind of, you know, policing the area on their own. Now, let's keep in mind, at the, the rally in D.C., we had eyes in the skies on us, too. All right? Let's not forget, we had eyes in the sky on us. You had federal agents all on top of the roofs, all on balconies with guns. They were surrounding us, and we the people took pictures of them. 
If you look at them on my timeline, if you look at the Rally for Reparations hashtag, you'll see we posted pictures of the the federal agents on the roofs with guns. So they 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 had eyes on us. And they were watching their ops that they sent. You dig? We have to understand that. They these oppie niggas that they sent out there who weren't effective, you know, they weren't effective there, but they had they had their ops out there. They had they had their assets, as they call them, running around there trying to disrupt stuff. You dig? And that that Hebrew Israelite group that was there, the one of the big Hebrew Israelite organizations, they were like, "Hey, those guys are not a part of us." Which I kind of knew because the way those dudes were dressed in D.C., it was I've never seen the Israelites dressed in that type of outfit. These niggas look like Power Rangers. I don't know where they were from. But some of the other larger Israelite groups are like, hey, that's, they ain't us. They ain't us. And when they were at our event, we made our security, we, hey, we told them to back them niggas up somewhere. They can't be around what we're, what we got going on. We got a permit for this area. These niggas up here babbling and, and tether explaining, doing whatever they're doing. I had my security back their asses up off of our plaza onto the sidewalk way in the back to let folks know these niggas ain't got nothing to do with us because I knew they were bad news. And then now we see um, some old oppie white chick was out there interviewing them as if they were with us. And these niggas are talking all types of crazy and reckless stuff. Like, yeah, we're going to enslave the white people. The Bible said we're going to enslave white people. Like, okay, nigga. And they were trying to act like them niggas were that. No, they ain't with us. They weren't with us with all that goofy stuff they were talking at all. You dig? So it is what it is. It is what it is. Let me see who else we got. Um, Y'all raise your hand if you want to get on because I ain't going to be on here too long. I just wanted to tap in because I know it's kind of late and I got to you know, take me some more nighttime medicine so I can get right because I got to shoot a commercial tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to be doing that. So I'm not going to be up too, too late. And like I said, my L.A. people, if you know an interior designer, an interior decorator in L.A. who's thorough, who um, has experience with commercial buildings, y'all email me, info at TarikElite.com. That's my email, info at TarikElite.com. Ladies and gentlemen, info at TarikElite.com. Let's get um, FBA Pizzazz. Let's get Brother Pizzazz in here. What's up, FBA Pizzazz? Oh, what happened to him? Uh oh, oh. Brother disappeared. Let's get T Way in here. Let's get T Way in here. T Way, hop on. Waiting on T Way to hop in. What's going on, man? Quick question. Uh, what's up, T? What's going on, brother? Yeah. How you doing, T Way? It's working. Trying to make a living out here. It's working. No doubt. No doubt. So, what's on your mind? I don't know if you've covered this before, but what's your opinion? How you feel about the whole Freedom and label? Uh, if you have covered it, I ain't, I ain't caught it yet. So. Oh yeah, I have. I have. I have. I have. Oh yeah, I've covered that before, and I'm. <laughs> 100% with that. We should see, we have to use a lot of shut up, shut the fuck up, dogs. We, well, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Well, hold on, I hear the police. Hold on, hold on one second. Hold on. So the police, the police have pulled somebody over right by my house. That's where my dogs are barking. All right, I'm gonna I'm check on that in a second. But um, yeah, back to my man talking about the Freedman label. Great thing. Oh yeah, absolutely. We should use that because um, when we use the Freedman label, that will alleviate the white supremacists trying to say that um, um, things shouldn't be race based or whatever. Oh, with this shit. Okay, let me let me hold on, guys. Hold on, because my dogs are throwing me on the asses in the backyard. Hold on one second. It's barking like they're going to do something. They take their ass outside and they both get shot. Uh, hold on. 
That's why I, I want to get another pit bull. I got a Frenchie and a. Hold on, get your asses out of here. I saw about that, guys. I've got these little cute dogs for the kids. My wife won't let me get a pit bull. <laughs> She's scared it's going to eat up the kids. Like, no. I want to get another damn pit bull. And she's like, I'm not cleaning up that shit. And I know you ain't going to clean it up. You know. But like I said, back to the Friedman label. I absolutely agree with using that because that's what we were designated as. We were using that term um, after slavery. And the reparations were supposed to be designed for Friedman. So that's a term that we should definitely use. We have to um, learn how to interchange our terminology in different settings. You understand? In um, a courtroom, if we're going to talk about um, getting reparations, the Friedman label would be absolutely perfect to use because that's a status designation. And you're still talking about foundation of black Americans, but you're just not saying the word foundation of black Americans. You're talking about Friedman, which isn't a racial term, but it's about a specific racial group. So you can play that game too, you see. And the descendants of slaves, that's another great term to use from a legal standpoint so that they can't turn around and say, okay, you're, you're making race-based policies, which is unconstitutional and all of that stuff. You can say descendants of slaves. You can say freedmen. What's important, and I've always said this, before we get anything together, we have to have the cultural understanding together. That's where the term foundational Black American comes in. So now we're talking about our general culture and how important our general culture is. So when we talk about our culture, we always use the term foundational black American. That's why we're so codified now because we're focused on culture. Foundational black American, that's really something that helps us focus on the culture. Who are we and what have we done and what is our culture? And our culture is damn near everything. We didn't create it as foundational black Americans, damn near everything of significance. You dig? And uh, we're going to display a lot of our creations and inventions in the museum. We're going to display a whole bunch of that stuff. It's going to be absolutely phenomenal. Your dad. Okay. We, we have um, the, the, the white gentleman. We have Mr. Media. He's back. This is... Um, Mr. Media. What's up, Mr. Media? Hop on. This is um, a, a white male who has some interesting views about black society, but hop on here, Mr. <clears throat> Media. What's going on? How's it going, sir? Uh, good evening to you. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Yes, indeed. What's on your mind? I have a screen film, like a, a screenplay idea to pitch for you, and uh, I was hoping to, yeah, I just want to pitch an idea to you really quickly. I think you might actually fund it. All right. Okay. Well, let, let's let, let's hear this this screenplay <laughs> idea. Let's hear. All right. So it's a it's an FBA theme movie. All right. Okay. Twelve years a slave catcher. Okay. Now. Okay. Got the it. Premise of the movie takes place on the African savannah, and the young man, his name is Baku to Baku. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Got. It. All right. So uh, Baku to Baku speaks like. A popping language with this, with this, with this, like he speaks like a poppy, like a, like, you know, like it. that. So he starts off like in a tribe, like in a small gang of like young black men, you know, young black spear truckers of the time. But he's the most exceptional of the spear truckers. Okay. And he works his way up from like age 11. All right. His first project is to go round up a small village of, uh, of new slaves. Okay to be transported over to like Senegambia or Upper Guinea or Windward Coast or Gold Coast. Okay. Got it. And uh, Got it. his first, his first uh, slave, his first catch that he does okay. on his okay. way. Got it. Okay. You got it. The thing is you got to. So, so it's for, okay. I'll get there. I'll get there. I'll get there. So his first, you gotta, you gotta, 
yeah, come on, yeah. I, I understand the suspected white supremacist. Your wit is not that good, but you gotta speed it up uh, because right, I have I a film you. idea. Okay, I, oh, okay, okay. But why you why you you're, you're conjuring some some more material? Uh, I now let me tell you about my film idea. I got a great film idea. Uh, I'm not it's finished about, yet. No, uh, wait, wait, I'll wrap it up. I swear to God, I'll wrap it up. Oh, no, in 30 hold on, hold on, no, hold on. Let me right. listen. But I got to give you my idea. I got a film idea. It's about um, a bunch of. It's a, It's a, kind of like a horror movie. It's a town full of white supremacists, and they realize that their numbers are dwindling. Okay, they realize that they are a global minority, and they're surrounded by a whole bunch of black people, and all the white women starts having sex with the black dudes. Got it? And then all the babies are black, and the movie is called Staying Alive. You think that'd be a great idea? I think that would, wouldn't that be cool? Staying Alive, right? Hey, Tariq, I'm trying to pitch you a success story. All right? I'm a telling you, story. Staying Alive like, would be the... It's, all right, look, it's, it's the founder, it's the founder, the founding people of FBA, period. All right, mm -hmm. that's what I'm mm -hmm. saying. Like, this is... This is about a, an 11 year old who makes his way up to become like the Donald Trump of the slave trade operation of the time where he is. And mm -hmm. uh, his main mansion is in Baghdad, you know, because because if you were born back then, you were living in Baghdad, in like the, the golden kind of the golden era of uh, the Middle East. Anyway, so uh, and plus he uh, he contributes great greatly to the birth of the slave trade that would want that would become, you know, uh, just what it was. OK, North okay. America and, yeah, uh, right. and Africa. OK. I got another film idea. Okay, and let me let me throw this one at you. Um, this is the great idea. I think you'll like this one. This one is about a white supremacist with a twelve-inch penis, and it's called Finding Neverland because the shit don't exist. All right, so let me. <laughs> so it's let very me. Very rude. Very rude. Jake. No, that's not rude. That's not rude. I think that'll be a good movie. Finding Neverland. All right. Get your ass out of here. All right. With your troll material. Anywho, this piece of work. All right. Oh, God. I mean, to get to the point with your damn trolling, just all over the place, just dragging on and on and on and on and on. Anyway. So anyway, it's been real. I think we had a good conversation tonight. I think we had a phenomenal conversation tonight. We kept it short, kept it sweet. I don't want to be on too, too long. Um, but listen, like I said, guys, I'm looking for an interior decorator out here in Los Angeles. Email me, info at TarikaLeet.com. My brother Macau just sent me a couple of people. Um, some thorough commercial interior decorators in L.A. If you know some people, hit me up, info at TarikaLeet.com. Um, I'm out. Um, Y'all... Follow me on my YouTube channel, Tariq Radio. I go live tomorrow night. And um, y'all be good. Pu